What is the strangest thing you've seen that you cannot explain? It's a thing that happened to me first and as a kid I went to the kitchen downstairs late at night to get some snacks for midnight gaming. There was this bowl of candy on top of the shelf that my parents didn't think I knew about, so I grab a chair and had to stand on my toes to reach it. The bowl slipped from on top the shelf onto the floor, and I held my ears knowing there would be a sound of shattering glass in the middle of the night's silence, and I thought my parents would wake up and be mad at me, but there was no sound and no trace of the glass bowl or any candy at all on the floor. I was so flundered, so I just sat on the chair staring at the floor for a while, before going back to my room wondering what the hell just happened. A few days later my mom was looking for the bowl, but it was nowhere to be found, and I never told anyone as they would just think I was crazy. Edit, wow. First time I get this many upvotes. Thanks guys. I don't know how awards work but I see that I got one. If it means you spent money to give it to me, I'm thankful. But please kindly consider donating it to a local shelter. Edit edit. From reading the comments. Occurrences of this kind seem more common than I cold guessed. Interesting. Please continue to share your versions. Colon close bracket. Somewhere. Someone was woken up by that bowl breaking on their kitchen floor after you transported it there. And they have that weird bowl story. A very badass great day 9 you, a former neighbor's dog, was so afraid of a month old kitten, that he ran into the deepest room of his home, and didn't stop quivering and whimpering for several hours. For context. He wasn't a timid dog. Little over a month before the mentioned incident, a drunk man attempted to break into their home at night and the dog bit half of his left foot off. P. S. Rest in peace Scoob. Dogs are fucking weird, but I love them. My technical stepfather bought an idiot cockapoo w hull it wasn't afraid of anyth. I. One day one of my friends shows up, and he wouldn't go near her. Her. Just kept barking and backing away. Way. Oh. Oh. He is afraid of black people, but she's far from black. Acknowledged. Whoa. Hang on a minute. Dogs can be racist. Edit. Wow dogs really can be racist. Guess I just learned something new. 4 Amish men in a room counting money with a money counter, while simultaneously weighing out my ounce of weed. Just wasn't what I was expecting. Back in the 80s an Amish run drug ring was broken up near me. Said ring would actually cross the border into Canada. Smuggling their product in their buggies. I still remember a Canadian border guard testifying they never searched their vehicles, because they were Amish. And cold and conceive of them doing something illegal. LOL reminds of the old story about the guy coming to the border between Spain and France every week on a motorcycle. Carrying two bags of sand. Border guard searched the bags every time. But never found anything. So he had to let him through. Guard has his last day at work before retiring. Guy comes to the border again. Carrying his two bags of sand. Guard says look. Man. It's my last day. I'm not going to bust you. You're clearly smuggling something across the border all this time, but we never find anything. What is it? Guy says I'm smuggling motorcycles. My grandfather told me a really cool story. There's a couple of things that grow, or rot in trees that glow. Google Foxfire. He saw an owl completely covered in this stuff flying around at night sometime in the 1930s. Standing outside of a convenience store, I saw two different cars park about a minute or so apart, and go in the store. It was obvious the two didn't know each other, at least it seemed. After shopping, they each left in the other's car. Still can't explain it today without going down the CIA conspiracy route. This happened to a guy I worked with years ago. He ran into a store on his way to work to grab coffee, I think, and left his car running. When he leaves, he gets in what he thought was his car and continues to work. When he got to work he gets a frantic call from his wife, because the police were trying to get a hold of him. This was before everyone had cell phones. Turns out he had taken a nearly identical car, that was also left running. He said in hindsight, that he thought the car felt off, but was too oblivious to notice that morning. From what I remember, the other driver was understanding and there was no legal trouble. My friends did this a few years ago. They dined at a restaurant on a busy holiday. Then the valet pulled up the wrong Lexus for them. Same color and model. 
they hopped in, and didn't notice a different keychain in the ignition. The seat was off. But of course the valet must have adjusted it. A couple miles down the road, the wife noticed some small items in the center console entrance, and their garage door opener is missing. They had a horrible realization and drove back mortified. The valet brought their actual car down. Not sure if the other car owners ever knew the wrong family took this for a drive. But my friends now have this great cocktail party story for years to come. Closed bracket. Went hiking late at night with my buddy when something big and bright flew right over us above the tree line. It was so bright we couldn't even look at it, and whatever it was it didn't make a sound. Actually it was probably the most quiet moment of my life. I remember saying what the fuck, but no sound came out of my mouth. Only lasted a few seconds, and it was over. Probably a small meteor right. You can look at videos of them online. They fit the description almost perfectly. Yup. I've had one bright enough to throw a glow over my surroundings. It was amazing. Broke up after a second and this burst of smaller ones. Continued. If I see something like that on chance it makes me wonder how many I miss when I'm not looking up. Fall 2009 I was sick, like super sick. It was a few weeks before my amputation and I was battling a severe bone infection. I was hopped on all kinds of antibiotics. I had a PICC line and would dose my antibiotics through these little balls and pain medication. I'm a huge Yankee fan, so my best friend got us tickets for the ALCS game at Yankee Stadium. She pushed me around the stadium in a wheelchair with a shitton of blankets on me. It was freezing, just to put a smile on my face. My friend leaves the seats to go get some hot dogs and stuff. This is where it gets weird. As soon as she leaves, to my recollection, an older Irish gentleman sits by me. He offers me some of his spiked hot chocolate. But I said no thanks, and explained that I was on a lot of medication. We begin talking, and I told to him what was going on with my life. He asked if I was scared to have my leg amputated. And I told him that I was. I was really frightened of the unknown. He gave me some pretty, valuable life advice and comforted me. He assured me that it would be fine. He told me that, if you have to be an amputee, try to be the best damn amputee that there is. Apostrophe. My friend comes back with food and asks W how long I was talking. To There's no one next to me. Me. I guess I must have hallucinated this but I DK. I DK. DK. It felt more like some kind of angel or being that came to me to let me know it would be okay. K. I guess my guardian angel is an Irishman with spiked hot chocolate. 8. I love that even hallucinated Irish men are drunk. They are but whilst real Irish men will put liquors such as Baileys in their hot chocolate. Ghost or apparition Irish men will stick to whiskey or other spirits. Was driving home from work one afternoon with my brother and cousin in the car. As we were sitting in traffic I noticed high up in the sky and way out in the distance a small motionless black square. I pointed it out, and both my brother and my cousin spotted it quickly, so I know it wasn't in my head. It just remained still for about 45 minutes, and then the sun had set, and it was too dark to spot it any longer. It just stayed in the exact same spot the whole time, and while it was really far away you could still tell it was a perfect square shape. Once I got home I went online to see if there were any mentions of it anywhere and there was nothing. To this day I still think about it and wonder WTF I was looking at. Sounds like you guys had a dead pixel in your Matrix headsets. Yeah. Just call the CIA hotline and report it and they will take care of it immediately. When I worked in the medical field, I had a dream one night about a patient of mine. A very kind elderly woman whom I visited once or twice a week. In the dream she came to me, dancing, and called out to me that she wasn't hurting anymore. I was so happy watching her dance after seeing her decline for years. When I got to work the next morning, I told my coworkers about the dream and later that morning we got the call from her daughter that she had passed away the night before. I cannot explain that, but I'm glad I had told my coworkers about it before the call, and not after otherwise they'd never have believed me. Such a bizarre experience, but so wonderful to feel she was at peace. I've never told anyone this before, but I've had the exact same thing. When I was much younger, 7 to 8, I spent a lot of time on pediatric wards. There was nothing wrong me. 
Just that my dad worked days and my mum worked nights so. My dad took me to the hospital, where my mum worked, to chill on the ward's playroom for an hour or so, before she finished work, and took me to school. There was a regular visitor to the ward. Laura, not real name, she was always really ill. I've no idea what was wrong with her, but we used to play together a lot on these occasions. One night, I had a dream about her. We were playing, and she seemed really happy. Nothing overly significant, but I'd never dreamt about her before. Nevertheless, dad woke me up to go up to the hospital. I told him about the dream, and that I was excited to see Laura, and tell her too. Dad told me I had to go to grandma's, because I can't go to the hospital today. Later that night after school, when I got home my mum was still in bits. Laura had passed away during the night. I'm 29 now, and that is one of my earliest and most vivid memories. Still makes me well up thinking about it and how it impacted my mum. Edit, just changed my age at the time as I asked my dad about it, and he corrected me. When I was in my 20s in the early 1990s I had a car accident that kept me in hospital for about a year. It was a Catholic hospital and most of the nursing staff were nuns, and besides the normal checks they regularly just stopped in to chat and see how I was doing. Early one morning there was a knock and this nun came, in that I hadn't seen before, and introduced herself as Sister Greta, a member of the nursing staff. She sat on the side of the bed, and we spoke for a few minutes then she asked if she could say a prayer for me. She held my hand, and said a prayer then wished me well and left. About 5 minutes later there was another knock, and one of the regular sisters came in to say hi. I remarked it was going to be a good day, because it already had one visit from sister greeter and now I was getting another one. She said there wasn't a sister greeter on the staff and there was only two sisters around. It being so early, I pointed to the bed which clearly showed where she had been sitting and described her and the habit she had been wearing now getting a bit unnerved. The sister basically shrugged and bustled off. She came back about half an hour later with a book about the hospital's history and showed me a picture of some nuns from the 50s. Their habits were exactly the same as Sister Gretas that it described. Turns out that patients regularly mentioned talking to nuns in old garb that definitely weren't part of the current staff. I never saw her again or anything similar while I was there. Kinda freaky but not overly disturbing. I can't really explain it, but I guess it's the sort of ghost story I'm okay with. If that's what it was. Sister Greet is still doing the Lord's work helping people in need. That's nice really. Not so much something I saw, in hindsight, thank fuck, but rather something I heard that I can't explain. I was staying at my dad's place for the weekend when I was about 16, and he lived out of town in rural Australia. The kind of place you don't lock doors etc. The house was pretty long. With my dad's room, being right at the front of the house in a loft style second floor, and my room was literally down the other end of the house. I would say about 20 meters away down the end of a hallway with a few other rooms and bathroom on the way. It was just he and I there that weekend and I stayed up late on the computer and went to bed about 2am. Got into bed and started listening to music to go to sleep to about 2 minutes in. I hear the door at the end of the hall slam shut and I had not closed it. I immediately take my earphones out and went to call out thinking it was my dad when a bedroom door right next to it opened. No one occupied that room at this time, and I immediately got that shaky shiver feeling all through my body, knowing something wasn't right and assuming someone had broken in. After about 30 seconds or so of silence, I hear a loud thud on the wooden hallway floor, like a stomp. After about 5 seconds, it happens again, and again, again. It was in a rhythm. About halfway down the hall to my bedroom. There was a little bit off the side where the bathroom was. Which had an old wooden sliding door that was extremely loud to open and close. After about 30 seconds of the stomping and the hall stopping. At this point I was nearly throwing up from fear. The bathroom door was reefed open with all the strength you could imagine. Like how you would imagine someone to do it in a complete and utter age. I sat there completely paralyzed thinking my room is the next stop. I sat, waited, and nothing. I literally sat up in my bed until the sun came up at which point I ran up to my dad's room to explain what had happened. We go through the house and nothing. Nothing out of place. All the doors shut, which he had actually locked all but one. 
My dad said he did not come down, and he has never been known to sleepwalk or anything in his life. I have never been able to come up with a rational explanation of what happened that night. I'm not someone that is much of a believer in ghosts or anything. But that night I just had a feeling that whatever was out there wasn't exactly human. I still don't know who slash what that could have been, and why I didn't hear anything after the bathroom door being ripped open. Still get chills telling people that story and even writing it out now. I feel so uneasy. I was having a sleepover at home with a friend from school. We were watching a film and suddenly the weirdest thought comes to me. Her dog has just passed. Obviously I cannot just blurt that out. So I weirdly ask in the middle of the film. Hey. By the way. How was your dog? She was quite surprised obviously. I had never met her dog and she doesn't talk much about it. She just mentioned she had one. She answered that he is aging but well. We moved on. But I cold and shake a weird feeling. Anyway. She goes home the next day and calls me after a while. She asked. Why did you ask about my dog yesterday? How did you know? He passed away last night. Around the same time you asked about him. I was both shocked and unsurprised at the same time. I don't have an explanation. It seems like a weird coincidence, since her dog was not something usually on my mind. It never happened to me again. I was driving one night in a really foul mood and speeding. Like when I say speeding I mean at least 25 over the limit. Anyway this car gets behind me, and for some reason I can just tell it wasn't a cop. It was a full tinted Chevy truck with weird lights on it, like comically large aftermarket front headlights. Once it got behind me, I got a really eerie feeling I can't explain. Like my body just knew something was wrong. Anyway I figured, if it was a cop they would light me up for speeding, but for some reason they just kept pace with me, also speeding themselves. So at this point I'm getting a little weirded out, so I turn off the freeway and they follow me. I turn into a gas station and get out. I figure if I'm going to get axe murdered at least the cameras will pick it up and give my family some closure. Something just didn't sit right with me. I knew something was up. As in getting out of my car the truck rolls its windows down. And what I saw still haunts me to this day. It was a heavily disfigured guy the only likes of which I can compare to that guy Rocky Dennis from the movie about the guy with a crazy disfigured head W Harlot falls for that girl W Harlot loves him for him and not the abomination that is H. Face. And he starts to motion me with his finger like telling me to come closer. Oza. I don't care if he was going to give me the winning powerball numbers there was no way in hell I was going to approach his car. Car. I bolt inside the gas station at this point my whole body is shaking. King. I try and tell the clerk what's going on as they stare at me probably thinking I'm drunk or high off my ass as my story doesn't make any sense. Ends. I go to look outside and the truck is gone. Gone. I still have nightmares to this day. Day. He was trying to warn you about the murderer in your backseat. Or he was trying to warn you how going 25 over causes accidents that can horrifically disfigure you or the other driver by dangerously chasing after you in an indignant rage. Not sure this counts, I was in it, but wasn't happening to me. Pull into a fast food drive through in Iridesa, TX, my first time there, my turn at the speaker, and I place my order, it's been a long drive, so I'm treating myself and being a little picky. Asking nicely, and building a customized meal. Cashier listens, and says again. You ate all that already, me, um, huh, cashier, oh, I'm sorry. Someone w how lot sounds, just like you was just through H. Eh, place the exact same order. D, me, hey, hey, cool, cool, wit, I'd, but cool, cool. I get to the window and the girl looks at me with this exasperated expression. I uh, opens the window and says it is you, me. Cashier calls her manager over and points at me, shows him the order, says nothing. Manager, welcome back. Was there a problem with your order? Me, no, I haven't gotten it yet. Manager, clearly confused, I made your order myself. Cashier points at time on receipt. Manager blinks and says that's the same order to her. Looks at me, back at her and says and that's him cashier i said the same thing both of them look genuinely upset and confused it got worse when i told them i had never been in odessa before
as the manager was handing me my food. He laughed and visibly relaxed. The other guy had long hair, he explained, pointing to my cap, like, halfway down his back, you just have a twin, I guess, with the same kind of car, his face when I took off my hat and showed him long hair, they might have been, messing with me for fun, shifts get long and people are creative, but if it was a game they deserved careers in theater, because they looked terrified, yes, I looked around for copies of my car or self, while I was in town, Nada. There was an old episode of Unsolved Mysteries, where a guy kept going to different businesses and the employees would ask him if he had forgotten something, because they said he had just been there. Strangely, it was never resolved. When me and my best friend were teenagers, we were walking home during the wee hours of the morning when a drunk guy basically acted like we knew him and invited us to eat. For some reason, we actually came with him and we ate at this 24 over 7 joint where he told us about his adventures around the world, showed pictures, etc. We hung out until it was around 5am and walked home together. I have no idea w harlow fucking was, I still don't, nt. I once met this young homeless guy, probably about 10 years ago, acted like he knew me, when I said I had no idea w harlow was the s. 8. Isn't your name Baird Monger and you work in radio broadcasting? I'm. I got right freaked out cause I had been applying to colleges for radio and there was no reason for him to know my name. American English. I said no. No. But I've wanted to work in radio. D.O. W. Harleter. You? He responded saying it wasn't important and to ignore him as sometimes he gets confused between the present and the future. Tio. And just left. Left. I never saw him again. Gain. It threw me off completely. Telly. I abandoned the idea to go into radio almost out of fear. Fear. I was driving home from work on the back roads and was driving behind a car that was the same make, model, and year of my car. Just a different color. Further down the road, we both get into the turn lane to turn, left onto a long straight road with open fields on either side the car in front of me turns onto this road and i wait for a car to pass and then turn as well it takes less than five seconds however when i turn onto the road the car that had been driving in front of me was nowhere to be seen this road has no turn offs and it's long and straight so you can see pretty far ahead of you the car had just vanished and i still think about it today i have a dash cam now but i wish i had had one back then because I question what actually happened that day. Please click subscribe if you enjoyed this video.